Logic Pro X Masterclass, faster class for beginners, intermediates, and professionals. <laughs> I promise I won't talk like that the whole time. How you doing? 150 lessons by a 25-year studio junkie professional thriving in the industry, 200 million streams a year, 30,000 tracks deep. My name is Norbs. Welcome to the Billion Dollar Studio. Coffeezilla, eat your heart out. I'm about to take you from beginner or intermediate to absolute pro in no time. If you want to just jump right in, please use the chapter points below. We'll see you on lesson one. Otherwise, I just want to spend a few moments explaining who I am and why I think this course will be the best thing for producers in Logic for 2023, 24, and 25 maybe, and how you will be super dangerous by the time you're done, even if you're already an intermediate to semi-professional. They say those that can't do, teach. Those that don't do, teach. Because they're too busy doing, so I can't teach you if I'm over... Anyway. I very much still do, but I also know this is a great way to get my channel popping and to finally give back. I'm operating out of abundance, baby. Kumbaya. Now, the last five years of my life have been so entrenched into music production that I've fine-tuned my craft so much. My catalog has grown to 30,000 tracks for a reason. I have become a womp, a weapon of mass production. You will become a womp by the time you're done this too. Before this five years, before my music really started to take off and my beats started to take off, I went down a six-year journey of building music production software, 25 titles under my belt, standalones, VSTIs, VST effects, contact plugins, and helping a few other companies come to market because my outreach was so big. Then one step further for all that software, I had to build out 14,000 samples over six years. The first few years, I was already pretty good. By year six, dangerous. You guys are going to get some of these modern music sample packs from me in the links at the end of the videos. I'm also going to give out some MIDI chord packs and maybe even some of this software as time goes on. I took the whole business down and got really into the music itself and it's blessed me super huge. So again, this isn't about me trying to sell you anything. There's nothing to buy at the end of it. I'm going to be giving stuff away and I want to use this as my big give back and legacy leaving behind my last youtube channel i have 30 some odd of them since the early 2000s this is the last one okay all for you guys all a big passion project to finally tell my story my goal is also to take you away from i need to make beats to sell to rappers to get placements i need to be on beat stars how do i sell beats, beats get away from that you are a chakra controller you are a cymatics wizard you control audio you are so much more dangerous than you realize last thing i want to bring up is the beauty of what we do. I went down a very deep rabbit hole of studying the actual frequencies and producing a lot of meditation music, chakra music, solfeggio frequencies, binaural, alpha, beta, theta, gamma, delta, 432 hertz, and other stuff. I've studied the sine wave because that's what we come from. That's what we are. We are electromagnetic frequency, baby. You are a controller is what I'm trying to say. You're so much more powerful than make beats, sell to rappers, make beats, sell to rappers. This thing should be about you blessing yourself and your family through audio and noise production and being creative. Having said that though, I am teaching you guys in a very modern way, going through hip hop, R&B, reggae, grime, trap, drill, house, EDM, Afro beats, drum and bass, jungle, raga jungle, every genre pretty much except for country and rock. Maybe someday. I know this intro was a bit long winded and maybe sounded a bit boastful, but I just want you guys to be reassured. This is legit. I am legit. This isn't a YouTuber gone big trying to sell you some stuff, okay? Coming for you. Although I do say it's for beginners too, I do expect you to have at least taken those training wheels off. I teach in a very efficient manner. You're gonna start with the water up to here in the pool and we're swimming in the deep end fast. Having said that, lesson zero, MIDI controller, good sample packs. I give you some good sample packs at the end of this, but you need a MIDI controller. If you're clicking in your beats all day, you'll get through all the lessons, no problem, but it's limiting and you have so much time in your day to be creative. You don't wanna be wasting time clicking around. You wanna be efficient. <laughs> Get yourself a little MPK-3 or whatever with the little two octaves and pads up top. It's great, great, great to start with. It's still a lot better than clicking stuff in all day or using your actual typing keyboard as your musical keyboard. At least learn to do that though. I'm gonna show you how. I'm also gonna be opening up opportunities for people to collab, to get on verses, to network with labels I know, to network with distros I know, to network in the industry a little bit, okay? The music business space as a whole. Okay, finally, let's go. Lesson one, Logic Pro X most used shortcuts. If you don't use shortcuts it's going to stop you from becoming a womp weapon of mass production and these help with my production workflow a lot if i don't use these i'm doubling tripling my production time and throughout this whole journey of learning logic through this faster class 
We're going to be using shortcuts throughout the whole thing. By the time we're done, try not to ever click anything that you don't need to click because you've already memorized the shortcut. So let's go. CMYK is a term for imaging, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. But CMYK is also shortcuts, just an easy way to remember them quickly for yourself. C opens and closes your loop points. M is a mute. M, mute, S, solo, obviously. Y opens up my instruments. So I want a piano. I get in there, type it in, close it up just by pressing Y again. K, metronome on, metronome off. CMYK. Your left and right brackets or the comma in the period help you go backward and forward. And then holding down shift is bigger bars. Up and down on the arrows just goes through the tracks. And most importantly, navigating around the canvas itself, okay? Your mouse scroll wheel and holding down alt is vertical. Alt and command is horizontal. And then alt and control together will just literally zoom you right in. If you press Z, it'll just open up whatever layer you're on in full view. And then E pulls up your piano roll. Or if you're on a sample, it'll pull up the wave editor. You can also set your own key commands by just going to key commands, presets, or edit assignments and go in there and actually edit what you want, what to do. R is for recording and it'll give you a four count in because this is on. Keep that on at all times, in my opinion. Two, three, four, and boom, we're recording. You can shift R, it'll stop recording, but keep playing. Or you can just press the space bar and it'll stop recording and stop playing. Okay, and knowing how to shift record and record to audition stuff and keep going is important. I'll give you an example. So while you're still in the groove, you can keep working. Count in, one, two, three, four. Shift R, turn off, and keep going. See, I like that, R. Shift R, turn off again. We're still in the groove, and keep going. Good. Shift R again. Okay, so let's say I laid it, I'm happy with it. If that wasn't open down here, you can double click or again, shortcuts, E, 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 E. I'm gonna drill it into your brains, E. <laughs> now down here, we can select everything and Q for quantize, okay? Usually it is the first letter of a word. You can change what you're quantizing to over here. Now the other shortcut I'd wanna know, how do I duplicate stuff and manipulate this really easily? One quick way, select everything and control R to repeat, okay? Let's say I just want to repeat this and I want to change the top, the top bit. Same thing, just grab these two. It'll start duplicating them. Alternatively, you can select some, just control C for copy and take your marker point to a different part and control V into that. Alternatively, you can also select just these, control C, remove them from here, go to a different layer and paste them here. And you would have had to have your marker point back here. Boom. There, so paste it where you're supposed to paste it by using the marker. And then Command R also works up here. So we can just grab this, boom, or cut it in half, boom, boom, boom. Cut it into quarters. If we're gonna do like a drop, cut it again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And even though I am your teacher, I encourage us to help each other. So check the comments. You guys post your most commonly used shortcuts that I left out. Having said that, those are my most used shortcuts in Logic Pro X. Let's move on to the next lesson. How to assign the right click tool and secondary tool in Logic Pro X. We go to the Logic Pro dropdown, settings, general. Here we make sure we're in the editing sub tab and right mouse button is assignable to a tool. Underneath that, you wanna make sure fade tool click zones is also checked. I will go over the marquee tool click zones. I'll check it and go over it. And then we can close this. Now you're gonna notice if I'm on the bottom half of a layer, I have the crosshairs. If I'm on the top half, I have the arrow. So if I'm on the bottom half, I can do selections or I can single click. If I single click and then on the top click, it'll allow me to split it. If I select something and then go to the top and click, it'll allow me to split and cut it. If I just go to the top, I can then drag it. Now assigning your right click tool, you'll notice that now there are a few extra drop downs here that weren't there before. And you can assign your right mouse button to any of these. I love the scissors because I just use it so much when I lay stuff and just want to cut, cut. Sometimes I forget about the marquee tool that I can just go like this and like this. And that's two clicks. So this is still only one. And then in the center, this is everything available to you also through shortcuts. You don't see them when you click on it, but you do see them when you press T. Then you can see all the shortcuts for everything else. 
Okay, if you don't like having your fade tool enabled, then just remember A at all times. So when you do want to fade something, you would press T, A. So now you see the little fade tool icon and I can go ahead and fade stuff. Now you should be set up with your mouse. Left click, right click, and T for dropping down into any of the other stuff you want to quickly get access to. And that is how to assign your secondary tool and your right click to scissors in Logic Pro X. Let's go to the next lesson. How to create a go-to template in Logic Pro X. This will save you tons of time. I strongly encourage you to do it. So let's say we have a brand new canvas and you always find yourself going to new, setting up your first sound, setting up your first audio layer and spending probably about five to 10 minutes just on setup, on basic setup. And you know you have your go-to sounds, you know you have your go-to drum kit, your go-to bass lines and stuff. Sorry for the sudden screen change, but I just timed it and it was about six minutes it took me to set up a bunch of basic layers and some basic effects on some of the layers. And this is all the stuff that comes out of it. I'm going to press V to get rid of it. Shortcuts, V, 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 V. And this is the basic setup that my go-to template I typically find myself doing every time I open Logic and get to beat building or song production. Now, obviously, this is just a template, so I can change instrument types at any point in time, but this just gets me going really quickly. So now I just go to Save as Template. template one. And let's say you do different genres, have a bunch of different templates, depending on what your workflow is about to be. So now when you open Logic, you'll get this prompt to go down to my templates, double click on it. It opens up your template. You're ready to rock and roll. Saves you so much time. I really wish I started using this on day one of using Logic. Simple little thing, but sometimes it's the simple things in life. That's how you start a template in Logic Pro X. Let's go to the next lesson. How to pop out the piano roll or mixer to a new window in Logic Pro X. Let's go. It's actually very simple. If you do have two or three screens, it comes in handy. You simply press Command 2 or Command 4. Now you can move it onto your other screen. I sometimes pull the screen onto my iPad so that I can actually touch the screen and touch the mixer. Command 3 pulls up your smart controls. Command 5 pulls up your score. Command 7 is your event list. Command 8 is your audio pool. I tend to use this one a lot. Once you get recordings going, all of your stuff and edits and whatnot are in here, then you can select what's unused and get rid of it to clean up your file a little bit. And Command 0 is your environment if you don't like the mixer view and want to use this instead. To recap the most important ones though, Command 2, Command 4, Command 8 are my go-tos when using Logic Pro and I need to pop out Windows because I have three screens here and the laptop four and I like to have my actual workspace perfectly clean. That's how you pop out the mixer and piano roll to a new window in Logic Pro X. How to add the stereo out channel to your tracks in Logic Pro X. Okay, it's actually very simple. We're going to right click on the stereo out and click show output track. That's gonna lay it into our tracks. Now when we select it, we can press A, shortcut for automation, which allows us to do a whole bunch of stuff to the actual stereo out. That's how you add a stereo out to the track list in Logic Pro X. How to use the musical typing keyboard in Logic Pro X. It's actually very simple. Pick an instrument that you're on, let's say piano, and Command K is the shortcut, or Window down to Show Musical Typing. And now you can actually play on your keyboard. Very weird, and it feels funny for anyone that's played on an actual keyboard, but if you don't have a MIDI controller, get a MIDI controller. <laughs> let's actually record something. Now your other shortcuts aren't going to work while this is open. So again, Command K, close it, and now you can get in there and keep working. You can also use the numbers to do a little effects like bend. Your tab is the sustain. And then up here, you can choose which octave you want to be on. Then the shortcut for that is Z and X. This gets a little hard as you try to multitask with it, but. Okay, there you have it. And then lastly, you can change the volume as you're playing by C and V going down and up. So. Okay, there's a quick demo and to show you how ridiculous it is using this musical keyboard and why you so should get a MIDI controller, even the little guys with the little pads up top and a couple octaves is so much better than this or trying to click stuff in. But if you're going to click stuff in, at least do this, at least start learning a couple keys and a couple chords. 
You'll love that you made that decision. All right, that's how you use the musical typing keyboard in Logic Pro X. Let's go to the next lesson in the faster class, how to cut, join, or manipulate MIDI blocks in Logic Pro X. It's actually very easy, holding down the Alt key on your keyboard, click, hold, and drag, copies bars over. Alternatively, Command R duplicates bars over, and then to rejoin them, it's simply Command J. Sometimes you like to have things as longer blocks, sometimes you like to split them up, right click to cut if your scissors tool is enabled. And then let's say you wanna drag this back a bit because there's a big drop that happens here and you wanna gap up before the drop. So you'd cut it and move it. But if you wanna rejoin stuff, select them both, Command J for join, and they are together again. So happy together. Okay, let's move on to the next lesson. How to use the EQ in Logic Pro X. The equalizer is actually easy to access. It's right here in this little grid looking thing. And once we have it open, this is your bass, this is your mids, this is your highs. I'm gonna play this little piano loop we have here and just give you guys a quick demo. Let's get rid of the bass. Okay, let's up the highs. And now let's reverse it. Get rid of the highs. Now we have the channel EQ and we have the master EQ. So once all these have been EQ'd to your liking, you'll move on to mastering. And the first step in mastering is opening up your actual EQ. And when you're building beats, you'll typically do something that looks like this. Bump up your kick and put your snares a little higher because chances are everything on the high end is low for you too. Or it's, if it's too high, then you'll do the reverse. Okay, so you have an EQ per channel and you have the master EQ. This first bar and this last bar are both disabled by default. So you have to click on them to get to that very first point. And once you do have that very first point, you'll notice you're flattening it right out. If you wanna fine tune any of these, you can simply go down here and drag them this way. You can select any point and then increase or decrease how thin versus how wide you wanna affect the whole channel. I'm doing it to the mic right now so you guys can kind of see what's happening as I maneuver these around. So all of these points can be manipulated by moving them left or right. You can override others and then you can move them up or down and distinguish how thick you want each of these to be. I also like to keep this on so you can see the actual waveform behind everything. If I turn this off, you don't see nothing and you don't get to really understand what's happening to the audio. Okay, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. We don't need to go over these. That's how you change and manipulate sound using the equalizer in Logic Pro X. Let's move on to the next lesson. How to quantize notes and drums in Logic Pro X. Try to do it all in one bar as well. So I'm just gonna record a second layer over our piano here and try to go through eighths and sixteenths and then triplets. Okay, kind of yucky, kind of ugly, but we're gonna fix it all up here. So we select the first ones and we press Q. And because I played it kind of on key, it snaps them into place. If it was further off key, I take it to one eighth. Now let's listen to that first four. Okay, sounds good. Now let's move on to the next four. Okay, played a little bit ugly there. This is, this is this already I can tell is way off. I'm gonna manually move that over and you'll notice when you move and it snaps and you're like, I can't get it right there, right where I need it. Hold down control and then move and you'll be able, sorry, click on it first, then hold control and then you can move it and fine tune increments instead of snapping. Okay, so now I'm gonna select these, take it to 1 16th and quantize. Perfect. Also, just a side note, quantizing everything all the time isn't always recommended because it sounds too robotic slash AI and you want things to be humanized. Most things are gunshotted in full volume, no dynamics. Every note in a human piano or a guitar sounds a little different. They try to replicate it well here with the dynamics of how hard you press a key will sometimes give you a different, like watch, is different than, right? So sometimes they'll program different sensitivity levels to make it more humanized but that's another reason why I don't always quantize stuff. And once you get good enough at playing, you'll notice you're close enough and it sounds better and natural and more organic with little micro offsets on many instruments overlapping each other. Okay, I'm rambling. I digress too much. Let's move on. Now the first eight together. I like it. Okay, now we move on to the triplets. 
One, two, three, one, two, three. I played it horribly, but we'll select them and now move into the triplets and we'll go to 112 to start. And that's exactly how I wanted to play it. Okay, I took the last part out and just simplified it. Okay, so now we should have a full four bars nicely quantized through eighths, sixteenths, and then triplets. Very nice. Just select everything. And we can also choose from swings. And for drums, it's pretty much the same thing. Open up any drum kit, sampler, etc. Okay, so the first four, Q, shortcut. And even though you're on 16th, if you played it good enough, it'll snap to your eighths. Anyway, which just happened. Do that there. And then take this to the twelfths again. And we'll try to take this to sixth. There's gonna be overlap here, but that's okay. Okay, that last part is just butchered. Let's get rid of it. Now we'll bring the piano back in and lower this down a little bit, mix them in properly, pan this a little bit to the left, this one to the right. And that's the basics, intermediates, and a bit of advanced quantizing for you in Logic Pro X. Let's move on to the next lesson. How to quantize chords in Logic Pro X. So basically, this is a cheat code for anyone that doesn't really know how to play too well. I'm going to try to play chords that don't make sense and then try to kind of fix them very quickly. Let's just be random. So select everything. Let's say we'll go to a D minor. There, it snaps everything into place for the closest notes that it's gotten to for a D minor chord. And now it makes sense. So if you don't know how to play just yet, sometimes, not every time, but sometimes this will work. If you played your chords too close together and their keys are all close, to, close together, you'll go through a lot of these and it still won't fix it necessarily. So just know to separate them out a little bit and it should be fine. And that's how you quickly cheat code style quantize chords in Logic Pro X. How to use note repeat in Logic Pro X. This is an amazing tool I find myself using on every single track. It's not available as the default drop down or plug in anywhere. You have to actually go into your settings and enable it into your key commands first. Go to key commands, edit assignments, and look for note repeat. There you have it, note repeat. Click on it and actually assign a key command to it. Mine is control one. So when I press control one, it pops up this little window for me. When I drop down, it gives me the option to set it to a modulation wheel and set my range from 16th to 64th. And when this is enabled and you're on a drum layer and you let's say have a hi-hat selected, I'm going at 1 16th right now. And as I move the mod wheel up, I'm going to 132 to 164. Okay, so this comes in really handy when trying to juggle those hi-hats and juggle those snares. In fact, I'll just record a little something here with some variation to it. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna move that over and do this again, except this time I'm, I'm going to go from this to triplets. So we'll start at 112 and we'll go to 148. And then we'll just select the T here for triplets. Okay, so that should give us our one, two, three, one, two, three. Now I'm gonna lay some snares and actually roll them as well and then pitch them down as they roll. Sounds really good. Okay, now I'm just going to pitch bend. Now I'm just going to lay some kicks and snares. Now I'm just going to copy this over. I'm going to move this piano over. So now we have triplets and then we have the eighths and sixteenths. And we'll hear a bit of a change up.
Okay, and that's how you open and use the note repeat tool in Logic Pro X. Next lesson, how to automatically stretch your audio samples to fit your BPM using flex and follow in Logic Pro X. So let's say you're working on a song and you're trying to bring in a loop that's at a different tempo than what you're working at. We're gonna drag the loop in just on a brand new layer down at the very bottom. And now there's a few different ways of doing it. And this first way won't always work with everything you drag in, but the first thing you wanna try is go up to flex and follow here and just turn it on aligned bars and beats and it should snap it right into place as a side note sometimes when you drag stuff in and you use this first method it will make it double timed or it'll make it twice as long because it doesn't know if it's a half a bar a full bar two bars and loop developers don't have a standard either so sometimes you'll have to double hold down the alt button and double it stretch it out or hold down the alt button and bring it down to half and you'll be fine okay now let's say that didn't work for you i'm going to do this again we're gonna drag it in. And let's say for whatever reason you tried that and it doesn't work. Hold down your Alt key. Look at the very bottom. When I hold down the Alt and let go of Alt. Hold down Alt, let go of Alt. When it's held down, you can click, hold and drag and stretch it. This also won't always work if your loop has a tail because sometimes loop builders like to build that last sample so that it doesn't cut off and they have a tail and you'll have to manually adjust it a little bit. But this is also another way to do it. And if the first way does work, then later on in your development process of the track, let's say you want to change tempos much later. You have like eight different loops you've brought in and samples you've brought in, and you have to select everything at once. So do a select all, and then go do your flex and follow. Then once it applies it to everything, you can change the tempo of the whole song and it'll change the assets as well. So now let's take this up to 130, let's say. Okay, there's one other way to do this, which is to drag in your sample double click on it, or again, E for your shortcuts to open this up, go to your smart tempo tab, go to edit, and now apply project tempo to region and downbeat, which means the project tempo is 120. This loop is at 134. We want to apply 120 to the 134 and bang, it snaps it all out for us. And that's it. We're good to go. And that's how you make your loops or samples fit into your BPM using flex and follow or doing it manually in Logic Pro X. Let's move on to the next lesson. How to use the loop tool on MIDI blocks or audio blocks in Logic Pro X. It's actually very simple. Click on your bar or even bars, we'll grab two. And on the right hand side, you'll notice on the top half of the layer, we have a loop icon and on the bottom half, we do not. If we click and hold on the bottom half, we can shorten this or we can lengthen it and it just opens up or shrinks our actual bar. If we go to the top half and use the loop points, we can't shorten it anymore because that is the end of the loop, but we can lengthen it. So if we drag to the right, you'll notice we're looping it and the little rounded corners is our loop points. So we'll loop it twice and now we have that extended. If at any point we want to cut it, we right click at the loop points and we can cut. If you've looped at least once here, let's say, and we want to shorten this, we can also just use the left mouse button and click anywhere. However, you'll notice that when you do, you just cut what's on the right. It doesn't just split it, but it actually cuts it. We'll go back here, same thing. So what you can do, if you have your marquee tool enabled on the bottom half, you can single click and then top single click, bottom half, single click. And now we can shorten these, or let's say we really like this piece. We can move it over here and just start looping these points. Or let's say we want to cut this in half again, or right there and loop just these points. We can do this at any length of any part of any bar really. And it's an easy way to manipulate stuff. So you might find yourself using this loop tool quite often. You might find yourself rarely using it, but there you go. It's pretty handy when you need it. And that is how you use the loop tool in Logic Pro X for MIDI and for audio blocks. How to stretch or shrink MIDI blocks in Logic Pro X. This applies to audio blocks as well. This is also very simple. All you have to do is grab a bar, hold down your alt button. And if you know, the length of it, for instance, this is four bars, then just drag it out another four bars, let go. And now it's half timed. So this will be full timed and then it'll go to half time. Okay. And I'm going to just shorten this up, bring it back and solo it. So you guys can hear the difference. We'll just go from this point. Alternatively, if we want to double time something, we would just stretch it in the opposite direction. So I can click, hold and drag, holding down alt. Click, hold and drag to halfway. And now I've just double timed it. It's not too often that you'll use this, but sometimes it does really come in handy. When you're doing drops in trap drill grime, sometimes it's nice to double time or half time when you're breaking down after a drop and whatnot. 
So a cool thing to know how to do. Next lesson, how to max out volume on all MIDI notes fast in Logic Pro X. Actually, it's more of a how to manipulate MIDI notes properly in Logic Pro X. For example, if we lay some drums and all of our kicks aren't the same volume, it's gonna sound weird, right? So let's like, let's do this. Let's lay some drums. And we notice by color, that these aren't all the same. Okay, so now we can select all the kicks by clicking, holding, and dragging. And we wanna grab the velocity here and bring it right up to 127. Now you'll notice it won't let me because some of these are already at 127 and the lowest one will only go up to 103. So now I hold down Alt and it overrides it. And now I'm, I'm all the way up. Hold down Alt the other direction as well and you can bring everything down to whatever you want it to bring, to bring it down to. Now, once they're all at 127 and you hold down Alt and bring them back down, they're all gonna be equally at that range now. So before they were all at different velocities, we maxed them out and evened them out and now we can bring them all down equally. Okay, so now we can do the same thing to the snares. Notice how they're different colors. I'm gonna grab everything and I'm gonna hold down Alt and drag this to 127 let go or click somewhere else. They're all the same color. I'm gonna select them all again, hold down Alt, drag down, and they're all still the same color, right? So we normalized everything. Let's go back up. And that's how you max out and even out volumes on MIDI notes in Logic Pro X. Next lesson, how to separate drum sounds from MIDI kits into their own layers in Logic Pro X. So for this example, we have a kick snare hi-hat going. But let's say you want to treat the kick differently and the snare differently and the hi-hat differently as far as EQs go or filters go or anything else goes. Typically, you'd control click and be able to separate by note pitch or something, but this is coming from a VST and that won't enable you to actually have a separate layer and a separate instance of the VST. It'll just use the same instance. So what we want to actually do, if we click on a note, it'll select everything on that note. So let's say here we have the hi-hat selected. I'm going to control C, delete duplicate this layer by pressing on our plus symbol here and just paste. It just pasted the MIDI. I don't know why it gave me extra there, but we can just right click and delete that. Okay, so now we have the hi-hats on their own layer and now let's do the same thing again. Grab our snares, control C, get rid of it, bring our marker back to the beginning because it's gonna paste from where the marker's at, duplicate the layer again. So it's the same VST being duplicated yet again and now paste. Okay, so now we have all three sounds on their own layers and we can affect every one of them differently. So let's say I wanna add some more thump to my kick. And if all the sounds were together, then me editing this here would affect all the sounds. Let's say I wanna add some more highs or mids to the snare. There we go. So now I can EQ and affect everything on its own and not worry that I'm affecting the other sounds along with it. And that's how you separate your drum sounds onto their own layers in Logic Pro X. How to quickly move MIDI notes in the piano roll in Logic Pro X using shortcuts. So if I select any of these notes, hold down Alt and use my arrow keys. Down or up. Now if I hold down Shift and Alt, I'm going down an octave. This also comes in handy when laying bass because sometimes I'll play the bass up here to like, what note, some, what note is, oh, okay, it's that, it's boom. And then I'll play it up here and then quickly bring it down. And to bring it down, I'll just select it, hold down Alt and Shift and go down three or four or five times. And it brings me into my bass range where I'm supposed to be at. Sidebar shortcut I should have put in the first video, holding down Command and left key, right key, or up arrow, down arrow lets you navigate into the canvas as well. It's not nearly as efficient as using the scroll wheel, but something I thought I should throw in here as well while I remembered it. And that applies to both the top and the bottom. Down here, it's a little bit better when you want to fine tune your zoom point. So down here, it works pretty good. And that's how you move MIDI notes using shortcuts in Logic Pro X. Let's go to the next lesson. How to properly lower the main volume and mix in Logic Pro X. So if we press play here, Notice I'm redlining. I don't always listen to this, by the way. I fight I fight this all the time because you can go well above the red line without it actually redlining. Go by your ears, not by the computer every time. However, just for this demonstration, we are redlining. So in order to bring the mix down properly, you might think like, what is it that's redlining it? It's the whole thing together. It's so many sounds overlapping. X is for your mixer. Bring up the mixer, go to your last layer, hold down shift, go to your first layer, 
press play and slowly drag down the mixer. You'll drag all of these down at the same time, and that will be how you properly lower the mix before you start filling in your headroom or before you're sending this off to mastering or you're exporting a couple groups of layers to bring into a new canvas to master it yourself and leaving headroom in there, this is how you'll wanna create the headroom, okay? So I'm gonna press play here and just lower this slowly. So now I'm well below the zero and I have some headroom for exporting this, re-importing it into a new canvas and continuing my mastering process. How to record vocals or audio in Logic Pro X. It's very simple, simply create a new layer, Choose audio, choose create, and it'll make you a new audio layer. Now the one that I'm on that you're hearing the microphone go through, it has a noise reduction filter on it and it has a compressor on it. We're gonna go into more of this kind of stuff a little bit later in the series. For now, you don't need to worry about this if you're just recording your guitar or it's your first time recording your mic and just wanna get used to it. When you're on the layer, press the R and that'll enable record standby. Now, when you actually press record, it'll give you a four count in and you are recording and you will see what you are recording. In fact, I'll make this bigger and you'll see it recording down here as well. I'm just gonna record a little ditty over this and we'll use that for our temporary audio for now. Why not? I'm willing to humble myself and embrace humility, even if I can't sing too well. Let's go. Baby, why you got me going so crazy? What haven't I done for you lately? Give me yes and no or a maybe. Can I take a ride in your Mercedes? Why you acting so damn shady? Can you please act like my lady? Why your eyes always looking so hazy? Fuck it back to my he sound. Press spacebar again to stop recording. If you keep recording, it'll do takes and you'll keep doing takes in there. And it's a bit of a messy process I'd rather not go into right now. So let's just try to avoid that. Don't do takes just yet. Just try to nail it once or do a few takes further on down the timeline and then stitch together the parts you wanna to stitch together. Now it's important for me at least that I did use my RX-8 noise reduction tool. I feed this SM7B mic through a preamp with an aftermarket tube on it that goes to my sound card and it's very sensitive. And if I didn't have this on, you would hear everything around me a little bit more. And then I could apply this in post and do more post-processing, which you guys will be doing and I'll show you how. However, I find the hot mic input being filtered in real time is super important. So when I say how to record proper audio or proper vocals in Logic Pro X, your line going into the machine and how it's being handled is step number one and super important, especially if your end result results in hiss, lack of dynamic sound, or you spent a lot of money and you're still not getting that Howard Stern boom in your voice. I can improve this even more to have more boom in my voice by simply EQing a little more. I'm gonna add way too much, way too quick, so I'm just gonna leave it off. The cleanliness is what's important here. Okay, so we have some clean, raw vocals and the singing isn't that great, but I'm gonna show you how to even fix this without using auto-tune. We'll use that as well. We'll auto-correct and all that, and we'll have our little auto-tune effect if we want it, but I'm gonna show you how to manually fix anybody's vocals, including your own, even if you don't sing too well. Okay, and those are the basics of recording vocals or anything really into Logic Pro X. How to use the compressor in Logic Pro X on vocals or keys. So first, this is my voice without the compressor. And this is my voice with the compressor. Huge difference. What we wanna do is right above the EQ, you'll see this little bar. You wanna click on it, or alternatively, go to your dropdown and go to compressor. Now in the threshold, we bring this back to 30, and in the ratio, we bring this up to three, and in the makeup, we bring this up to five. Now I say we, but I mean I, and you'll see the needle starting to jump. These are my ideal settings for this mic to preamp to sound card, to machine, to DAW, chain. Your chain might require different settings and your knee and your tack and release are very subtle changes you probably won't need to worry about. And the day that it comes when you do need to worry about these, you can go watch another tutorial that goes a little bit more in depth. But those are the three most important is you bring back your threshold, you bring up your ratio and you bring up your makeup. Okay, and that is the basics of how to use the compressor in Logic Pro X on vocals or on keys. How to record MIDI and audio at the same time in Logic Pro X. It's actually not that hard. We just wanna select a MIDI layer first and then an audio layer while holding down shift. So what I'm gonna do here is just duplicate my piano, get my audio layer down here below it, 
and I'm going to select the, uh, the piano first, hold down shift, and select my audio layer. Now, once those two are highlighted, I'm going to press the record standby button, and now I should be able to record both at the same time. Let's go. Baby, why you got me going so crazy? What haven't I done for you lately? Give me yes or no or a maybe. Can I take a ride in your Mercedes? Acting so damn shady. Can you please act like my lady? Why your eyes are always looking so hazy? Back to my sound. Okay. And if you had more audio inputs, you would hold down shift, select those as well, and record standby on those as well. If you have like multiple audio inputs, multiple MIDI channels, you can record more than one MIDI channel this way as well. Very good, quick method of doing more than one thing at a time. If you're good at it and you want to play guitar on one layer and sing on another layer and MIDI somebody else in a band setting, let's say, great way to combine multiple different layer types into one recording. And that is how you record audio and MIDI multiple layer types at the same time in Logic Pro X. Next lesson, how to stack tracks into summing track groups in Logic Pro X and why it's important. Okay, so I typically like to stack and sum my tracks when I'm working with vocals, but you can apply this to your MIDI as well. And it's basically when I want to combine a bunch of layers and then affect them all at the same time with the same effects and the same treatments and sort of have it all glued together for lack of a better term. So I'm going to hold down control while I have these two selected and it'll bring up my menu and I'm going to create a stack track, a track stack and make it a summing stack. And now on this top layer, I can apply effects and apply EQs and apply other things that will affect everything. And within that, these have their own effects and everything going on as well. So create a bunch of vocal chains for your background singers and then your front singers and then your other vocalist that's jumping in as the feature, etc. This is a great way to separate and group stuff and EQ stuff all at the same time. And if you've been following along the tutorials, we've been building this slowly over the first couple basics of the tutorial. I now have two audio layers in here. It's the same little ditty that I'm singing. Both turned out a little different. Now, when we work with these summing tracks, when we work with vocals, we can separate left and right channels a little bit, even though it's the same line, it's a little bit differently sung. And we have a cool little stereo image effect going on, which we can then further expand upon by adding effects and whatnot to the summing track. Okay, there we go. That's why it's important and how to stack tracks into a summing track in Logic Pro X and take more control of your channel groups in your songs. Next lesson, how to manually tune and master your vocals using Flex in Logic Pro X. If you've been following along, we've been slowly building this track and we have two raw recordings here of me singing a little ditty. What I'm going to do now is solo one and double click on it. So, or press E for our shortcuts to open up our editor. And here I'm going to click on this little icon, which is our flex tool. So once I turn it on, it's going to quickly analyze it. And now I'm going to change this drop down into flex pitch. And what this will do is basically bring up my vocals like they were on a MIDI keyboard in the piano roll. And I can see how I sang everything. I can see all the vibrato and everything. I can see the volume of everything and we get to edit it all here. Basically auto tuning, this is what auto tune does and it automatically does what you program it to do, which keys to stick to and everything else. We're doing it manually here. Every studio, every vocalist, except for the perfect pitch ones, shout out to Adele and her level of singers. But if you're not Adele, this is a great way to fix your vocals quickly. So first I'm going to control or command A and right click or control click, sorry, and set to perfect pitch. That will get rid of all the in-between pitch spots. Now I know some of these are supposed to be higher. And if I just click on the key, It'll bring up everything on that note and it'll allow me to move it up or down. So let me just listen back to it first and see what I need to do here. Baby, why you got me going so crazy? Okay, so I already know that I can bring this up, but it kind of goes, bay, bay. I want it to sort of swing like that. And that's what this line here is doing. So I'm going to leave that alone. Baby, why you got me going so crazy? I know this note goes up, so I'm going to go like this and just drag it up and something else I can do quickly right off the hop. I don't tend to do this till later, but I want to point it out right away. Select everything again. You'll notice these six points. Let me zoom in here. You'll notice these six points, six little, little dots on each corner. They all do different things. This bottom middle one is your vibrato. If you bring this down to zero, you no longer have, bay. it's just going to go bay and not vibrate at all. Okay. This here is your volume. So once we see a better background of it all. If any of this is too quiet or too loud, we can change the volume. I'm going to actually do that here. Whoops. I'm selecting everything. I noticed that up until here, 
I'm singing rather quiet and then I go a little louder. So I'll select those and bring these up a little bit in volume and then go and select this very first one and do that as well. Should be more even now and we should be on the right key with minimal vibrato. How much did I bring it down to? Almost zero. So our crazy is actually two notes. It's supposed to be cra. So I'm gonna cut it in half, right click. I'm gonna bring this back down. And then if we drag the top middle point, we can increase the pitch in semitones instead of all at once. There we go. And now on the right, point we can pitch drift so the ooh we can increase or decrease the speed of that okay and a little bit of work and there we go look it all looks like midi notes now and it's all perfectly sitting on the note how it's supposed to much different than when we started the sass and i'm going to press play here now and you'll notice that it sounds a lot cleaner even though i was kind of singing okay ish not great now it sounds kind of great Baby, why you got me going so crazy? What haven't I done for you lately? Give me yes or no or a maybe. Can we take a ride in your Mercedes? Acting so damn shady. Can you please act like my lady? Why your eyes always looking so hazy? Back to my sound. Much cleaner, much better. Now if I turn the other one on, let's see how much of a difference, if you can tell the difference if I'm singing off key on the other layer. Baby, why you got me going so crazy? What have I done for you lately? Give me yes or no or a maybe. Can you take a ride in your Mercedes? Why you acting so damn shady? Can you please act like my lady? Why your eyes always looking so hazy? Back to my sound. Okay, still sounded pretty good, but we're going to do the same thing on this layer now. We select it, click on our flex button, turn on flex, go from slicing to pitch, scroll down, Look at everything, select everything, control click, set to perfect pitch, go to our vibrato, bring it down to almost zero, and audition stuff and start moving everything to its proper notes if it's sitting on wrong notes. And that is how to manually tune your vocals using Flex in Logic Pro X. How to auto-tune or pitch correct your vocals in Logic Pro X. Now, quick disclaimer, if you do want that authentic T-Pain sound, you do have to get auto-tune. Antares does its own way of processing, but Logic will let you auto-pitch correct at a very low time rate, so it achieves much the same effect. Or you can also get the Waves Tune plugin, which I have here, which I actually like. I use this one. I'm not going to be using it on this tutorial here today, but I just wanted to point that out to you. So what I'll do here is record another layer of vocals. If you've been following the tutorials, we've sort of been building this over the tutorials. I have two manually tuned layers here. If you'd like to see how these were manually tuned, go back a few videos and you'll see this. So I'm going to record a third layer. We'll do these top two as our left and right ear background leads, and then we'll do this as the main lead, and I will pitch correct it using Logic's auto pitch correction tool. Baby, why you got me going so crazy? What haven't I done for you lately? Give me yes and no or a maybe. So now we go to our effects and go to pitch and pitch correction. I can manually choose which notes I'm going to want to stick to, or I can choose from a drop down here, which goes through C, major, minor, etc. So I'm going to then turn this down to zero, which means zero time needed to correct each note. It's not gonna drift at all. Okay, so I've got the notes program that I wanted to stick to, which is what these are sticking to as well. Now up here, these were these are perfect if we look at them in our flex tool. Here, this is not perfect. Let me turn the flex tool on and you'll see these are all over the place. So we're letting the pitch correction tool do what I manually did here a couple tutorials ago. If I go in here and fix these, there's almost no reason to have this unless you do want that zero time correction instead of a little bit of a natural drift. So I'm not going to fix this layer and I'm going to let the auto tune handle this or the pitch correction handle this. Baby, why you got me going so crazy? What haven't I done for you lately? Give me yes or no or a maybe. Why your eyes always looking so Bring the other hazy? Back to my sound, baby. Why you got me going so crazy? What haven't I done for you? 
So for comparison, I'm going to switch from the pitch correction to the manual correction back and forth a few times over the course of four bars each. So you guys can hear the difference. Give me yes and no or a maybe. Come and take a ride in your Mercedes. Why you acting so damn shady? Can you please act like my lady? Why your eyes always looking so hazy? Back to my sound, baby. Why you got me going so... Okay, there we go. I'm going to play them all together now one final time and we'll close up this lesson. Why you got me going so crazy? What haven't I done for you lately? Give me yes and no or a maybe Can you take a ride in your Mercedes? Why you acting so damn shady? Can you please act like my lady? Why your eyes always looking so hazy? Back to my sound Logic, why you got me going so crazy? Okay, that's how to auto-tune, auto-correct, auto-pitch your vocals in Logic Pro X. By the way, if you've watched all the lessons up until now, you have partially been initiated into Womp Gang. And once you are, you're, you're going to be dangerous. So without further ado, let's continue your initiation. Next lesson in the faster class. How to use the pitch shifter tool in Logic Pro X. Now, just because it's there doesn't mean you should use it. This is one of the few tools I will actually suggest to never use unless you super have to. I'll show you a few examples here of something you might want to call have to but I still would rarely use it. And there are aftermarket shifters that I would recommend. I won't recommend one, but I'll just say, go check them out instead of recommending one and starting comment wars or plugin wars. The shifter in this is not that great. It doesn't handle audio too well, especially if you have to go past a certain amount of semitones. So. So you hear that latency? That's the first problem. So you turn latency compensation on, still hear it. Now that's just that 25% mix. Let's go all the way. It's artifacting so bad. I'll explain why it's pitch shifting, but it's trying to preserve length. You can pitch shift and preserve length, or you can pitch shift without preserving length, which will make the, sh the snare much shorter. The faster and higher pitch it goes, and the lower, the slower it'll go, right? So now we'll go the other direction. And that's only at seven semitones. And here, same thing. It's having to shorten it to preserve the length. We can change this to drums to see if it'll improve it. I'll go up and down. Normal. This is up. Nope. Down. But the actual engine in contact handles destructive editing much better and it doesn't artifact like this when you go up high on the keys, when you stretch it. All this is really doing is stretching a sample across the keyboard and playing it up here somewhere. And it's it's not doing a good job. Now we'll try to do the same thing on a vocal layer. Baby, why you got me going so crazy? What haven't I done for you, lady? Shady, can you please act like my lady? One final thing I'll do here is lay a key over the course of four bars or more. It'll be a sustained note, so it's just a straight and then we'll pitch it up over the course of time using automation. When making modern music, EDM or risers, doo -doo 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 -doo, this can come in handy. This can be effective. But again, I don't recommend using this unless you really, really have to. Okay, so we can't even really automate this properly. <laughs> Pretty much killed my song by trying to do anything with it with the pitch shifter. So again, cool to have, not necessary to really use unless you have to. And that's how you use or not use the pitch shifter in Logic Pro X. Let's go to the next lesson. How to add a gate in Logic Pro X to minimize hiss and background noise. So while this is nowhere near as good as an actual aftermarket denoiser, this can come in handy. I'm going to use this sample here to demo this. Okay, so we're gonna go to our effects, dynamics, and the last one is noise gates. So now as we bring this up, it's gonna start cutting the volume. Anything below us, that volume, below a certain volume, will start getting cut out. So I'm gonna slowly bring it up until nothing is left. It's already starting to cut out. Now it's only a few things left and that's it. It's impractical to do what I'm doing here in a song, but I'm just showing you what this does. And if you have something with a s, 
dialogue tends to have this a lot. And this denoisers help way more than this. But if you don't have one or on top of a denoiser, sometimes this is still needed to get rid of background rumble and low end hiss and even high end hiss. So if we have dialogue with two people talking, maybe two different mics overlapping now, and you don't have an, uh, something to get rid of the breath noises and the in-between spots of each person that's not talking. So while this person's talking, this person's not, that live mic is adding more white noise to this person's talking. And this helps in situations like that. So what I'll do quickly is just record a couple test one, two, three, test one, two, three with my denoiser off on this channel. And you'll hear a bit of the hiss. And then we'll see if we can get rid of it with the gate. Check one, two, check one, two. Now let's see if we can add a noise gate to this and get rid of some of that background. Check one, two, check one, two. Testing the microphone hiss points and background noise. Check one, two. Check one, two, check one, two. And then I'll do it one step further. Go back on there, record just white noise. Okay, now let's listen to this back. We'll hear the white noise and I'm gonna turn the noise gate on. You'll hear it disappear. Now we'll listen to it from the beginning and I'll do the same thing. Check one, two, check one, two. Testing the microphone hiss points and background noise. Check one, two. A noise gate, either on dialogue or in some instances when you're playing an instrument or have recorded a guitar and want to get rid of some of the room hiss or a piano or any live instrument or live show even and want to get rid of some of the hiss and background noise. And that is how you use the gate in Logic Pro X. We have reached the end of part one. Salute, congratulations if you've watched all the way through or if you just popped into a timed chapter point because Google results or other results sent you to that part. If you are brand new to Logic and you took in all this curriculum, it's a long video, man. Salute to you and you probably want to watch it a few more times if you're new and want to retain this info because it's a lot in one video. Having said that, I hope you are ready for part two. The link's in the description or on your right-hand side of the screen. Dap yourself up, dap me up, tap yourself on the back. Congratulations. Yay. Shake my hand. We have now become a little bit closer. You are a part of the Womp Gang. Initiation part one of three is now over. If you did take all this in in one sitting and you made notes and whatnot, I would love your feedback. And if you are a pro as well, and I missed some stuff for beginners that you think they should know, please drop it in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you. Ask your questions, drop your feedback, and I hope I earned your sub today. This is Norbs. Salute. Thank you again. And we'll see you in part two. Come on, dap me up. No, come on. Touch the screen. Dap me up. Dap me up. Dap me up. Yeah, there we go. Dap, 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 dap. Okay. See ya.